By the end of this course, you'll have a playable character in Unreal that can do basic locomotion. That means things like idles, runs, jumps, and all that jazz. Hello animators, and welcome to my game animation workshop. I'm Skylar, I'm a principal animator at Riot Games, and I've been a gameplay animator for about 10 years. Some of that time I spent animating champions, monsters, and skins on the game League of Legends, but much of it I spent working in the R&D space, animating and building prototypes for new games. In this course, I'm going to hopefully take some of those learnings from over the years and teach you the basics of game animation. By the end of this course, you'll have a playable character in Unreal that can do basic locomotion. This course is going to focus on basic locomotion first because it's kind of the, the earliest and easiest stuff to sort of familiarize yourself with how games work. That means things like idles, runs, jumps, and all that jazz. Now each episode is going to be split into two parts. The first will be an animation portion where we actually sit down in Maya and do the animations and talk about workflow and talk about tools in Maya. But the second is an actual implementation portion where we take those assets that we built, those animations that we built in Maya, and actually put them in the game and make them playable on our character. So if you're an animator who's been thinking about getting into games or dabbling in games a little bit and just wants to get a good foundation to, to start from, this is probably the course for you. I'm going to walk through every step of the way so you shouldn't run into too many roadblocks if you follow along through these episodes. Now this first episode is a little less glamorous than maybe you hoped. It's going to be a setup episode. Before we actually get into all the nitty gritty of animating, there is a certain amount of just foundational work we need to do to set up our projects and characters. So in this episode, we're going to first set up our basic Unreal project. Then we're going to get our character from Maya. We're going to set up our character and export it and bring it into our engine so we can make sure that we can put animations that we do in Maya actually on our character in game. Then we're going to spend a little bit of time just fixing up the materials on the character to make sure that it looks really good before we move on. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to either bring your own props from Maya into the engine or how to download a free package of weapons or props that you can use for your character. I hope that you're as excited as I am to get started, so let's get right into it and build a game. All right, now that we've got the preliminaries out of the way, let's get started setting up this project. Now, whenever you start a new project, it's important to think through a little bit what you want to build, what tools you want to use, all that jazz, okay? So what are we going to build? We're going to build a third person game using Unreal Engine. That's the tool we're going to use. Now, why did I choose a third person game? Well, the third person camera is a pulled back camera generally behind your character. It's used for a lot of fantasy RPGs or that kind of stuff. There's a lot of other great cameras that are really fun to work with, like first person shooters, over the shoulder, top-down uh, cameras for strategy games. That are like that. They all come with their benefits. But since this is an animation course, I chose specifically the third-person camera because it's one of the few cameras that shows the whole character on screen, but still pretty close up. It's just a great view for showing off your character's animations. So I'm going to run you through the setup for a basic third-person game, and that's where we're going to get started. So let's hop over to the work machine, and I'll run you through it. All right, so the very first step that we're going to take is actually building a basic Unreal project that we can start from, that we can start implementing our animations into. Now, Unreal, they already built a lot of templates for different types of games. So we're actually going to, while I said we were going to start completely from scratch, we're actually going to start from one of their templates. There's no real reason to start completely from nothing when building an Unreal project. Even most of the professionals will usually start from one of these templates. So I'm going to walk you through the process of getting set up with a third person template game in Unreal. Now, the very first thing you're going to have to do is go to the Epic site and download the Unreal Launcher. Uh, this is sort of the portal for all of Epic's products. Um, and if you're doing any kind of Unreal development, you have to download this to get access to the engine. Once you've downloaded this, you're going to click on the Unreal Engine tab, and you're going to go over to your library. Now, you'll see I have a bunch of games already here. They're little small things that I've been working on. This will all be empty for you, as will this part up here. You won't have a version of the engine downloaded and installed yet, so you'll have to do that. You can do that by hitting this plus sign here, and you can add any version you want. Now, you probably just want to select the most recent one. Don't do the preview one, probably the, the most recent stable one. 
Uh, right now I have 4.25.3, which is one of the more recent ones, but by the time you're watching this video, there may be an even newer one. Just download whatever the latest stable one is and you'll probably be fine. Once you get to that point, once you have your engine installed and you're ready to go, you're gonna hit this launch button and this is gonna bring us to, it's gonna take a moment to open, but it's gonna bring us to basically a game creation wizard, which will give us a bunch of options for setting up our Unreal project. Um, you'll see in here that there's actually a bunch of different templates you can work from. You can work from uh, a like side scroller game. You can work from a vehicle game. You can work from a flying game. So we're gonna go through this process and we're gonna be setting up a third person game. I'm gonna just pretend like we're building a sort of third person fantasy game, just because I think that that's a great camera to sort of show off our animations from. Uh, you get to see the whole character on screen. It's pretty centered. It's just a nice way to see your animations and your whole character moving around in the game. So once you get to this uh, project creation wizard, we're gonna click on a game because we're making a game. We're gonna hit next. And here's the menu I was talking about where all your templates are. You can see there's a lot of options here. And if you want to explore these, I'd highly recommend it. They sort of have the basic functionality for whatever genre or type of game they're describing. But for the sake of this demo, we're going to click on the third person game and hit next. And this is the last step we've got to do. You don't really need to worry about this stuff unless you're a little bit more of a power user and you're doing fancy stuff. The main thing that we care about is putting in a name here and making sure that this isn't a location that makes sense for us, okay? So I'm just gonna call this third person demo. And I'm gonna leave it on my desktop. I'd recommend you maybe put it somewhere more reasonable than that, but for the sake of ease for me right now, I'm just gonna drop it on my desktop and it's gonna compile and build all this project there. So let's hit create project. This is gonna take a few moments and it's actually gonna open the project we just created for us. Uh, now, when this opens, what we're gonna see is the generic Unreal assets with some basic third-person functionality. And if we hit play up here, you'll see we have a character camera all set up. This is the basic Unreal mannequin, they call it. You can run around using the WASD keys, jump with the space bar. It has some fun basic stuff in here like falling and whatnot. And this is the foundation that we're gonna start from. Now we're gonna add a lot of functionality on top of this, uh, but as a starting point, this sort of has the basic controls and features that we already want. So there's no reason for us to start from anything but this template. Now that we've got the initial project set up out of the way, we're gonna hop back over to Maya and I'm gonna to explain to you how to prepare and export your character so that we can bring it into the game. Now I'm gonna walk you through the process of kind of picking apart our rig in Maya a little bit to get only the pieces we need and then exporting those out into a file format that Unreal can understand. Now, when I say we're gonna pick it apart, what I mean by that, there's actually only a couple things that we need from this rig. You know, when you open up any rig in Maya, there's a lot of stuff in there. There's your controllers, there's sometimes extra helper things and whatnot. The only things that we really care about getting into the game engine are the skeleton and the mesh. Now, if you're not familiar with these concepts, the skeleton is the group of bones that the sort of underpinnings of your character that control your puppet. And the mesh is the actual skin on the outside, the shell, what you actually see moving in the game. Uh, there's a thing called skinning that's connecting those two things together. And those are the objects that we wanna bring out. We wanna bring the bones, the mesh, and the skinning information. It's not particularly complicated, but it is a couple steps. So let's hop into Maya and I'll walk you through it. Okay, now before we get into fixing up our rig and getting it ready to export slash import into Unreal, there's a little bit of housekeeping I'd like to do first. And that is setting up some basic folder and infrastructure for this project and the assets that we're gonna work on. Now this might sound kind of boring, but I try to think of it as paying it forward to my future self. You know, I'm gonna be working in these files for probably months and it's worth it to take the time to make sure that it's organized up front so that once you get hundreds or maybe even thousands of assets, depending on the game you're working on, you have good naming conventions and they're all sort of placed and put in folders that make sense. So I've downloaded the Thor rig from the Agora community page. That's the, the character that I'm gonna be using for this workshop. Uh, and I have my Thor rig folder and my third person uh, project folder that I just created. 
So I'm going to open up my project folder here, and I'm going to create a new folder called source assets. Now this folder is going to contain all of my assets that don't go into the game. So it's going to be all my Maya files, all my character uh, material files, all this junk that I have, my animation files that aren't actual like game things, but are assets that are related to the game are all going to go in here. So next we're going to create a folder in here called characters. And sorry for my clacky keyboard. I'm sure you can probably hear that on the mic. And lastly in here, we're going to create a folder called Thor. And I said lastly, but we're actually going to have one more layer where we create some categories of things for this character. So we're going to create anims, where all our animations are going to go. We're going to create one called rigs. And for real, lastly, we're going to create one called textures. Okay. Now we're going to pull all the stuff out of this Thor file and put it into our own hierarchy. So inside the scenes, uh, this is the, the rig that I'm going to be using. Yours might be called something different. Um, I have rig version 17, whatever that means. I'm actually just going to, for now, for my own sake, delete off the 17, just call it Thor rig. And we're going to drag that into our rigs folder. I'm going to go back up to Thor. We're going to go back here to source images. I'm just going to grab everything. These are all of the texture images for this character. And we're going to drop those into our textures folder. Now, there's lots of other stuff in here. Like if you wanted to set up the picker and whatnot and have some of these other, other functionality in there, you can feel free to move those into folders that make sense. For now, I'm just going to abandon the rest of this stuff and leave it where it is. All right. So. Now that we have our rig in the right place, we can now go over to Maya, open this up and get started. So I already have Maya open here and we're gonna file open and navigate to that folder. So that was called third person demo. And in our source assets characters. And what I'm gonna do is I have an old one here. I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna add this to my hotbar over here, because this is a folder we're going to want to go to a lot, this Thor folder. So now it'll always be in my hotbar here, and I can easy access it. We're going to open up this rig. Oops, I am in the wrong place. Let's go back. I selected the wrong demo. Third person demo. Here we go. Source assets, characters, Thor. There we go. We're going to open that one. All right, it's gonna take a moment to open up. This rig uh, has a little bit of a load time, but once it gets going, it runs fine. And here we are. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my materials here. We're just gonna turn on the basic materials. And here we go, here is our Thor character. Now we only care about two things in this for the sake of our game right now. We care about the bones and we care about the mesh. Those are the only two things that we're gonna export out of the scene. So what we wanna do is we wanna strip away everything else and basically create a version of this rig that has only the things we wanna export. We don't wanna get all the controls, all the groups, all this extra junk. It's just gonna confuse Unreal and turn into a mess when we try to bring it in. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go over here to the outliner. If you don't have your outliner open, you can go to Windows Outliner. It'll bring this right up. We're going to navigate down from this Thor group down to this export group. And inside of this export group, there's two other groups, the bind group and the render group. The bind group contains all of our bones, among other things, and the render group contains all of our geo. So these are going to be the things we care about. But we want to pull them out of this hierarchy because we don't care about all the other stuff above it. So I'm going to grab the root bone by just clicking on it, left clicking on it, and then I'm going to middle drag it out of the hierarchy out here into the top level. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the geometry. We don't want this render group. We just want the Thor Geo group. And we're going to drag that out of there too. And then to clean up this scene, we're going to delete everything else out of here. We're just going to literally click on these things and hit the delete button. It may take a moment to actually do it. Um, do, 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 play some Jeopardy theme music. Okay, we're going to delete this. We're going to delete everything we can out of here that's not our uh, character. We'll delete Animbot. And there we go, we have just the root and our geo now. For the sake of saving ourselves a headache later, we can save this out as 
Thor export rig and drop it in the same folder there just in case we have a crash or something we'll save ourselves time down the road now we got to take this thing that we made this stripped down version of the rig and actually export it out and we're going to export it out as an fbx file now if you haven't used fbx before they're sort of a universal more generic type of file than like ma files or mb files and that's generally the type of files that you're going to import into game engines it's fbx don't ask me why i don't know the reasons it just is what it is um so what we're going to do is we're going to first grab the root and our geo and say file export selection. We're going to click that little dialog box because we want to make sure that we're exporting as an FBX. Okay. Now, if you don't have FBX as an option, which is possible, what you can do is make sure that you have your FBX export plugin turned on. This is a default plugin for Maya, but sometimes it's not turned on by default. So if you go to Windows setting preferences, plugin manager, and type in FBX, you want to make sure that your FBX Maya plugin is actually loaded. If it's not, check those boxes. And then when you go to file export selection again, you should see FBX export as an option. Okay, so I'm gonna hit export selection. And we're going to be confronted with a whole slew of options here. You don't need to worry about these too much. The only thing is if you have this animation box checked, you probably want to uncheck it because at least for now, we don't want to actually export any of the animation from this scene. We just want this the stuff that we have selected the 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 model and the bones okay so let's navigate back to our folder where we were at again to our third person demo uh source assets characters thor rigs and in here let's create a new folder called fbx and we will call this thor scale mesh and this stands for skeletal mesh because that's what characters are called when you bring them into unreal we're going to hit export selection this will take a minute to go through all the pieces of this character export them as an fbx you might get some warnings don't worry about it they're not important things it's just about materials so that's it for the export process now we're going to hop back over to unreal and we're going to import this character into unreal now Assuming we've done all the steps correctly up to this point, what we should have is a nice clean FBX file that has only the things in it that we need to get into our game. Now the FBX file is this sort of intermediary or middleman file type that both Maya and Unreal can interpret and understand. So next up, we gotta get this baby into the game. Let's hop back over to Unreal now and take that FBX we created in the last step and I'll show you how to import it into the game. Okay, so here we are back in Unreal. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the layout here for those of you who may not have really used Unreal at all before. Here you have your main viewport. Um, we did do a tiny bit here before where we hit play and worked in it. This is where your sort of game level and characters actually run from uh, and is a, the closest visual representation you have to what your game's actually gonna look like. Down here, a lot of the area we're gonna work in, this is called the content browser. I personally like to have this torn off and pulled over to another screen, but because I only have one screen, I'm going to kind of leave it in the default layout. Now, the one thing I am going to change, though, is the way that this uh, that the, the view here works. So I'm going to turn on this uh, folder view here so I can kind of see the hierarchy of the project. And then this is just sort of a personal preference, but I kind of like it to look like Windows File Explorer a little bit when I'm working. So you can also go here and switch this to columns so you can just see names and small icons, kind of how you would when browsing around in Window. That's 100% up to preference, but that's kind of the layout that I like to have. Now, before we import our new character in, I want to do just like we did on our art asset side, do a little bit of folder structure here so that as closely as possible our Unreal folder structure matches the folder structure that we have on our source asset side. So basically, we're going to just duplicate the exact setup that we did before, but here in Unreal. So I'm going to click on content and make a new folder, which we'll call surprise characters. And inside that characters folder, this is going to sound repetitive, but we're going to make a folder called Thor. And in this, you guessed it, we're going to create three folders called Anims, 
And instead of rigs, we're going to call it mesh on this side. And they also don't call textures textures in Unreal. Textures are just the actual images. So we're going to call this folder materials. OK, so we've got all of our uh, folders set up. Let's bring this character in and see what it looks like. So we're going to click on this mesh folder because that's where we're going to bring our scale mesh into. Now to bring a file into Unreal, there's lots of ways you can do that. As it indicates here, you could just drag and drop it. Um, but I like to just click import up here. It's going to import into whatever folder you have selected. So we'll click import and we're going to navigate over to our project third person demo. Go into our source assets, characters, Thor, rigs. And remember, we dropped it in this FBX folder. So we're going to grab our Thor Skelmesh.fbx and hit open. Now, just like when you exported from Maya, when you import here, you're once again confronted with more options than you will ever understand what you need to do with. I don't know what half these things do. Uh, you can kind of expand these out by clicking these little arrows. So if you care to look through them all, you can. The only one that's particularly important to us is in this first menu. So if this is collapsed like mine was, just click this little arrow drop down to get these sort of main import options. Now, by default, this option might be selected. Use T0 as reference pose. What this means is instead of using the actual default pose of the rig, if this is selected, it will instead use the pose from time zero or frame zero on the like animation file that's coming in. We don't want that. We want to actually use the default pose of the character because that's how it was rigged and that's what we want, right? So we want to make sure that that's unchecked. Other than that, you can pretty much leave the rest of these as they are by default. They should work fine. Now you'll notice that it already automatically recognized that this was a skeletal mesh and that we'd want to import the mesh and whatnot. So Unreal is pretty smart. It can generally recognize the type of asset you're trying to import, and it will try to appropriately give you the menu and, and type of thing that it is. Uh, and I would say 99% of the time it gets it right. So we're just going to hit import all. And this will take a minute because it's going to be importing the skeleton, the mesh, all the skinning weights. It's going to be importing all the materials and whatnot as well. So we'll just be patient for a moment as it comes in. Can hum a song, do whatever, maybe get a cup of coffee, and there we go. Okay, so let's take a look. Now, it did give us some errors. Um, I'm just going to say that these are nothing that are uh, uh, particularly important. It's just some information about smoothing groups, so we're not going to really worry about them. Let's open up our scale mesh by double clicking on it. It opened over here, so let's bring it here. And lo and behold, this looks pretty similar to our character in Maya. Let's pull it up. Now you will notice that the uh, the pose is a little bit different because the actual default pose of this character, the bind pose, does have the character's arms down at 45 degrees. What you're seeing in Maya is a sort of artificial pose that's then, in, that's then put on the, the rig to give you just like a more straightforward pose to actually start animating from. But the actual bind pose of the character is correct to what we're seeing in Unreal. Okay, so all this looks pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is bring in one of our test animations that I made to just make sure that it's all moving as we expect. And then after that, we're gonna update all these materials so that this character actually looks like the beauty shot with all the shiny armor and all that beautiful jazz. So let's hop back to Maya briefly. We'll pull in an animation and we'll do the export process for an animation so that we can make sure this whole rig is working exactly as we intend in the game. And with that, we have our skeletal mesh set up in Unreal. What we should have at this point is essentially the same skeleton, same mesh, same skinning that we have from Maya, now in engine, ready to hook up some animations to. At this point in the game, it's tempting to just move on and start animating our character, but we wanna pause and actually make sure we do a couple tests to make sure everything is working as we expect. We put that scale mesh into, into Unreal from Maya, but we haven't actually confirmed 100% that everything is moving as we expected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a test animation from Maya, a nice range of motion thing that kind of moves the character around a lot, 
bring that over into Unreal, compare the two, and make sure that we're actually getting all the same motion and behaviors that we expect in both before we get too far ahead. All right, back over in Maya. I've cooking showed this a little bit, so I already have an animation that I previously made that we're gonna use as a test animation. But if you want to go through this step and actually create a little test animation, uh, generally what I try to do for these kind of test animations is create an animation where just all the bones in the character are moving. It's not about making a good animation or an animation that is actually anything. The point is to just get movement on all the bones so that when we put it into Unreal, we can actually see if all of our pieces of our character are moving as we expect, okay? It just gives us something to uh, sort of test and compare against, okay? Now, the one thing to know whenever you're making an animation for games is that you wanna make sure your rig is referenced into the file. You never want to actually open your rig file and work directly on that. Now, if that's a new concept to you, I'm gonna explain it really quickly. When you're making a, any animation for games, so we're gonna go through this, I'm gonna create a new scene. We'll just save this guy for now. When you're creating a new scene, you wanna reference the rig in. What that means is that you're basically bringing in an instance of the rig file and sort of uh, creating this connection between that other file out there. And you're just dropping an instance of it in this scene. That way, if you make a change to the base rig at all, or let's say Agora Studio releases a new, new rig that has a new control feature on it that you wanna do, you could actually update your existing rig and all the scenes that you have it referenced into all those referenced versions will update as well, okay? So it's really just about like future-proofing your scenes. And how you do that is you just go to File, Create Reference, and you can navigate then to your rig. We're gonna grab our normal rig. It'll take about the same time as it would to actually open the rig to reference it in here. And as we saw before, this does take a moment to open. But once it's in here, it will act as if you just opened your rig scene. But this is just an instance of that rig, not the actual rig itself. So you can see here, it looks and acts in every way like our rig does. But if we go to File, Reference Editor, we can see that this is actually just referenced into the scene. And in fact, if we pull this menu down, uh, oh, I thought it would actually show us the file name. Yeah, there we go. You can actually see that it's referencing the file location of that actual file. Uh, and you could turn this off. It'll remove it from the scene temporarily. You can turn it back on. You could have lots of different things referenced in here, click them off. Referencing is just a really powerful tool uh, for workflow that you should get used to using. Okay, so let's hop back over to my animation. I don't wanna wax eloquent about uh, referencing, but let's hop back over to our animation test and we're gonna export this out, bring it in Unreal and use it as a test animation, okay? Uh, so let's wait a moment for this to open. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of opening, waiting, but that's par for the course in game animation. You spend a lot of time waiting for things to open. Okay, here's our animation. Now, when we export an animation, we don't care so much about stripping down anymore because actually all we're exporting, all we care about is the actual like transform and rotation information on the bones themselves, okay? So what we're gonna export, we're still not gonna just export every old thing, but we're not as worried about stripping it down in the same way that we were with the rig. So what we're gonna do is we're still gonna go here in the outliner, we're gonna go down to the export group, and we're just gonna export the bones. That's all we need. We don't need to select anything else. We'll just select this root bone uh, and then we'll hit File, Export Selection, just like we did before. We want an FBX again. As I said, FBXs are what we're gonna use for everything that we transfer from Maya to Unreal, Export Selection. And this time, instead of ignoring this animation box, we actually wanna check it. And I'd also recommend checking this Bake Animation box. Uh, what this will do is it'll bake the animation out before it, it goes, and just generally, I think it, tends to uh, guarantee that your frame data is better. Um, but you probably might might even know more about that than I do. I just know that I've got better results checking it, so I recommend checking it. Uh, we're gonna go up, we're gonna drop this in our Anims folder. Here we'll create 
yet another uh, FBX folder to hold all our FBXs because in the future we're going to have a lot of FBXs in here. Put this in here and we will call this, uh, what do we want to call this? Thor Anim Test. How's that sound? And we're going to hit Export Selection. Now what this is going to do is you'll see that this little marker is running along the bottom here. What it's doing is it is running through all the bones on the character and exporting all their transform, rotation, location information per frame. It's basically caching out all the frame data on those bones for us. And that bone data is what we're going to bring into Unreal onto that rig that we put in previously. This should just take a moment more. It usually doesn't take too long. There we go. It'll give you a warning that complex animation was baked. Give you this warning every time. I don't know what it means. It's never affected anything I've ever worked on. Someone smarter than me can probably tell you what it means, but who knows? Okay, so then we're gonna go back over here to Unreal and we'll go to our Anims folder now. We're gonna go through the import process again, import. We'll go up one level to our animations, FBX, Anim test, boom, open. Okay, now you'll see that contextually it recognized that this was not a scale mesh that we were importing, right? You see all that stuff that we had in that other one about meshes and all that junk, it's gone. It actually recognized that because we checked that box and actually exported the bone transform information that this is an animation. And it's just asking us, what skeleton did you animate this on, okay? And you'll notice when we click this drop down that we have two options we have the thor skeleton or the mannequin skeleton and of course we're going to select the thor skeleton because that is indeed what we animated on and we're going to hit import now it's doing the exact thing in reverse that Maya was doing it's looking through all that frame data and in this case it's looking at our skeleton and matching up all that bone data to the bones in our rig okay once again you get some warnings trust me it doesn't matter let's open this up and see what we got now there's an obvious problem. Uh, Thor is laying down on the job, which uh, this is a result of how this rig was authored. Um, the orientation in Maya is different than what the orientation in Unreal expects. And that might seem like it's a big problem. This confused me at first. Yours may actually come in right, depending on if the rig has been updated. I'm using maybe a little bit older version of the rig. But if your character comes in like this, your animations do not fret. It is very easy to fix. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to the uh, import rotation data. So over here in your menu, your asset details, if this isn't open for some reason, you can go to window, asset details, and it will open this menu up. So down here on import rotations, we can actually apply a rotation on import to this animation to fix this. Now, I just know for a fact, because I messed with this before, that the rotation we need is 90 and X. If your character's rotated some different way or you're using a different character and you have this problem, you're just gonna have to figure out what the offsets you need to apply are. So I'm gonna put 90 and X, and then we're just gonna click this re-import animation button. Now it's gonna re-import this animation, but on import this time, it's gonna apply the 90 degree rotation onto it. And we should see when I click this button, the character come in playing the same exact animation, but now operate exactly as we expect. Let's see if I'm right. And lo and behold, there we are. We have our character upright doing all these weird wobbly things. And it looks just like it did in our Maya. And we can actually go one step further and actually drop this directly into the game. We can go back to our content browser here, grab this animation, drag it. I just clicked and dragged it right into here. And when we play the game, we can get a little look at what this will eventually look like when our character is moving around in game. Pretty cool. And it looks like, at least at a glance, everything is working correct. So we're gonna stop with the character and animation portion of this right now and move on to getting all the materials hooked up to this character. With that complete, we're pretty much done with the animation portion of the setup for this character. Now, if you don't really care about what the materials or the textures on the character look like or adding props to your character at this point, you can kind of skip the rest of this. Your character is ready to go, ready to animate. But over the next couple steps, I am going to walk you through how to make your character look a little bit prettier, a little bit more like the beauty shots, and help you set up or potentially bring in some props into Unreal that you can use later for animating. 
You probably noticed at some point during this process that your character's materials don't look like they do in the beauty shots of this character. They're probably just gray flat colors or at least they're not right. In this step, I'm going to walk you through how to hook up all the correct textures and materials and to get your character looking all pretty. Now, this is a purely aesthetic step. You don't need to do this, but it will make the character look pretty much like it does in the beauty shot with the shiny armor and whatnot. And it's kind of a one and done thing. So once we get through this process one time, it's done. We never have to come back and do this again. I also want to warn that we are going to be working in one of the more confusing editors in Unreal, the Materials Editor. If you're not familiar with building like materials and shaders, some of the concepts in here might not really make much sense. But just bear with me. I'll walk you through each step. And I'm only going to really show you what you need to know to be able to get this character looking good. And then you never have to come back to these editors again if you don't want. So let's go ahead, hook up these materials, and get confused in the Material Editor together. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to step out of the animation and uh, skeleton and, and mesh wheelhouse world that maybe we're all a little bit more familiar with and step into materials and textures a little bit. Now, if you don't really care about your character looking like those beauty shots up on the Agora site with all the materials and, and, and whatnot and all the shiny armor and whatnot and just want to focus on animation, you can skip this step. I understand it is a little bit tedious and a little bit outside the realm of no normal animation and stuff, but it's also kind of a one and done thing. It's a little bit of a tedious process to go to and hook up all these materials, but um, once it's done, it's done and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So I'd recommend taking the time to do it if you want your character to look nice. So what we're gonna do is the first thing is to hop back over to our mesh folder, okay? Now you'll notice um, that when we imported our scale mesh, it actually imported a lot of other stuff along with it. The thing that we care about that it imported was these placeholder material assets, all these things labeled MAT, okay? So we're actually gonna grab all those MAT files this one is not called MAT, but it is a material. So we're going to grab all those and we're just going to click and drag them over into our materials folder. And you have a couple options here when you do that, but we just want to move there. OK, so this is just organization. We're just going to plop them over there for now. So they're in the right folder. Now, these are mostly blank materials. If you open them up, you sort of are brought to this editor and this looks like a lot of stuff, but you can see Basically, these just have a grayish white material plugged into them. What we want is we know in those source asset folders that we actually have all of the texture sheets for this. So we want to grab those, bring them in here and start hooking them up, plugging them in. I'm not going to hook up every single material for this character. I'll run through a couple of them just to kind of give you the idea and give you all the information you need to be able to do the rest of the process yourself. OK. So let's go ahead and close this material for the moment. We don't want to save it. And we're going to go to import. And we'll navigate back up to Thor and then to our textures folder. Now there's a lot here. We're going to bring in literally everything. So let's grab it all. Open. It's going to take a moment to go through all of these. But it is going to bring these in as texture sheets, just like basically images in here that we can start plugging into materials. You'll see it brought in all of these images. Let's just save those quick. <clears throat> and how we're going to do this is we are going to go back to our scale mesh and we're going to find a material that we want to hook up. And I think the best one to start with is probably the chest because it's the primary one that has kind of like the shiny metal parts to it and whatnot. So that's going to be the torso material. Now we can actually navigate right to our placeholder torso material right here. We can just double click on it and it's going to bring us to this. Now, as I said before, this looks a bit daunting. We're not going to do anything fancy in here. You could teach entire classes about this materials editor. We're going to do the most basic thing, which is just plug in the things that are named, the things that are on this. So when we look at the files, we're going to see that there's files called color, metallic, roughness, uh, ambient occlusion, uh, normals, and so on and so forth. And we're literally just going to plug them into the, to the name of the thing that they are. So let's minimize this a little bit. Go to our materials folder. We're going to scroll down until we find the ones that are all listed torso. And we're going to shift 
grab all them, drag them into here, and that's going to generate a bunch of textures in here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's spread them out a little bit. Okay. And we actually don't need this basic one that's in here, so we're just going to get rid of it. So let's click on this, and you'll see over here that it tells you what the name of this file was. Weirdly, it doesn't display it here, but it does over here. So we can see this one is the torso color. Let's say the RBG value of this, that's all the colors combined. Plug it into base color. Next up, we have the metallic. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug this into metallic. Then we have AO, that stands for the ambient occlusion. We're going to plug that down here into ambient occlusion. You can see this is real hard stuff. This is the normals. We'll put that into the normals. And lastly, we have the roughness, which we're going to plug into the roughness. Let's straighten these guys out. I always try not to have my pins crossed over. You try not to cross the streams, as they say. And there we go. Let's take a look at what it looks like on Thor. We'll save it. And check it out okay so that's pretty easy right now the only thing is I did notice that um, this comes out extremely shiny uh, it looks a little bit like wet plastic or something so I'm gonna show you quickly how if you want on any of these materials you can kind of uh, increase or reduce the shininess of these because some of them did come in a little shinier than I would have liked so I'm gonna go back over here and the shininess primarily is coming from this roughness so what we can do is we can add a very simple multiplier to this to uh, either increase or decrease the roughness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off, I just clicked on this RBG, I'm gonna pull off into nowhere's land, and I'm gonna say multiply. <clears throat> and we're gonna plug this multiply in here. Now, when if we want something to feel uh, less shiny or less smooth, we want to increase the roughness. So in this case, we want the number to be higher. So if we're multiplying it by one, it's just going to look exactly like it did because it's multiplying one of its roughness by one, right? So if we want to reduce how shiny it is, we want to increase the roughness. So if we go up to, let's say, five, you'll see it starts to load here. And now it's like pretty dull. So maybe we want somewhere in between, maybe let's do three, and that'll probably be kind of in the ballpark of what we want. Because we do want it to be shiny. I just personally wanted it to look a little bit more matte than what it was. Oh, and we do have to save it to actually get it to update. Okay, and you can see when we go back over here now, we get something that looks a little bit more um, like, uh, brushed metal as opposed to buff metal, which I think is probably more appropriate to what we want. So if you go through each of these different materials and sort of plug in the different parts of them, you'll get something similar to this. And the only thing you'll probably need to mess with, like I said, is the roughness. The only one in here that's sort of an anomaly is the eyes, because I don't think there is any textures for the eyes. So I'm going to show you how to just make an extremely simple eye glow material. Super basic, will take like two seconds. We're just gonna take this color here, make it kind of bluish, because <clears throat> we're gonna have glowing blue eyes. And we're also gonna plug this color then into the emissive so that it basically glows this color as well. And we could do a multiply here too and really amp this up. Make it more emissive by let's say five and really get a good glow on. Maybe we wanna make this a little bit paler so it's a little bit more white with just a tint of blue around the edges. That looks maybe right. And you can kind of tweak that however white or however blue you want it. Heck, you can make it red. We could make evil Thor. Let's save that out. <clears throat> and go back over to our scale mesh. And we now have glowing blue eyes. They could maybe be a little bit more blue, but you can fiddle with that. So that's all I'm going to do for the materials. I'm going to skip ahead now. And we're going to go on to the last step, which is adding some props into this project. Okay. 
All right, now I've showed you all the steps and tools you need to go through and finish all the materials for this character. Now it's probably a good time to pause in this tutorial and actually go through and finish all of those. I know I didn't get through every one and they will take a little bit of time. I know it's a little bit tedious, but it's best to do it now while it's fresh on your mind and just get it out of the way. After this, we're gonna go on and try to get some props into the game and then we'll be finished with setup. Here we are in the final stretch. In this last step, I'm gonna show you how to take some cool weapons or props from the Unreal Marketplace, bring them into your project, and then also how to take those same weapon props, export them back out and get them into your Maya project. This is really important because if we wanna have these weapons and whatnot to animate with, we wanna make sure that we have the same exact models to the same exact scale in both Unreal and Maya. So let's hop over to the Marketplace and buy ourselves some weapons. So here we are on the last leg of this episode, which is adding props for our character to use. Now, I wanted to have some kind of weapon to use for animations. You might want to try to add a Thor's hammer or a sword or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to abide by the classic Thor mythology, and I kind of wanted to have maybe like a spiky mace or something. Uh, so... I'm gonna show you two ways that you can go about finding some weapons and bringing them into this project so that you can use them for your animations in the future. So the first method I'm going to show you is the marketplace method. <clears throat> if we go back over to the Epics Game Launcher, we'll go back and open this up. I just right clicked on my menu down here and hit Unreal Engine. Over in your library, you see that I have a bunch of assets that I've downloaded from the marketplace, and we can add these to our project. Now, I know for a fact there's a nice little pack of weapons called the Infinity Blade weapons that are free. Uh, you can go to the marketplace, just take a moment to load, and you can search Infinite E and you can get these Infinity Blade weapons. Now they're free to download, so they're a nice little pack. There's a lot of crazy stuff in there. They're not always on a style, but they're always a good starting point for me when I'm just trying to look for some weapons to prototype with. Once you've found some weapons on here that you like, you can go back to your library, and from here, you can click Add to Project. Okay, so this is gonna then bring you up all of the projects that you potentially have on your computer. Now, you probably only have the one you just created unless you have your other own personal projects. Um, but here is my third person demo that I made. I'm just gonna click on this. This is easy peasy. And we're gonna hit add to project. Now you'll see in a moment that this actually will happen live. It was almost instantaneous. All these weapons are now in here. We have, oh, they're slowly being added here. Uh, this is bringing in all of the uh, uh, the meshes and scale meshes for all these things. So we can open up one of these and look at it. So here's like a bludger mace thing and whatnot. They're pretty cool, okay? Now I'm not gonna go too much further with this. Um, the only thing I'm gonna show you is, you're probably wondering like, okay, well I got this in Unreal. How do I actually get it out to uh, actually use it in my Maya scene, okay? So on any of these, uh, on any of these weapons, you can actually do like a reverse export out of Unreal that you can then use in Maya. So on any of these skeletal meshes, you can right click and say asset actions, export. And you see that you can actually export this as its own FBX. If you wanted to do this, you could just save it out to a props folder or something in your see or in your source assets and then pull it into Maya as if it was any other mesh asset. It'll have its materials and everything associated with it. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to show you one other way to bring props in, which is if you have happened to download or make your own props in Maya, you're going to use a very similar workflow to how we exported and imported our skeletal mesh. So as an example, I created this uh, perfect, beautiful, representation of Thor's hammer. Maybe the best version that's ever been made. And we're gonna try to put this in the game, okay? Now the important thing is if you make your own or try to download one, 
The only thing you really need to be worried about is that whatever you expect the grip position of the weapon to be, that should be at origin, and you should have no transforms on your on your weapon, okay? So make sure that your grip position is snapped to origin, and that you've frozen out all your transforms. So if there's any transforms over here, you wanna click on all this, say freeze all, freeze them out, okay? Now I'm gonna undo that, because that actually just messed up my position. And then the other thing you want to do once you freeze things, just to make sure that this comes in clean into Unreal, you want to make sure that you delete all history on this object. So you can do edit, delete by type, history. That'll turn this mesh into a clean mesh. Doesn't have any transforms, doesn't have any history associated with it. Should come into Unreal nice, clean, and easy. So we're going to export this. We're going to go through File with it selected, say Export Selection. Just like our other meshes and whatnot that we did, we're gonna make an FBX. <clears throat> we don't want any animation in this case. And let's go put this up into a Thor. We'll create a new folder here called Thor Props. And we'll make a folder in here called FBX. Let's call this Thor's Thor Perfect Hammer because what is better than this? And we'll call it done. Super fast, because this is a simple piece of geo. We can go back over here. We can add a props folder here in our Thor as well. And just like all the other stuff we imported, we'll click on import, navigate to our FBX, select it, open. You see it recognizes that it is a mesh it notices there's not bone, so it doesn't check a scale mesh. Unreal is really good at understanding what you're importing. And we can just hit import. And there we have it, a what happens to be a very minuscule hammer. I didn't check the scale of it before I checked it in. Um, so that is one thing that maybe you want to consider is that you actually scale your weapon relative to your character so that it doesn't come in as a microscopic ant hammer. What is this, a hammer for ants? Uh, so I would go back and fix that. I'd scale it up in Maya, then freeze out all those transforms again and get it to be something that's more appropriate for my character. But that pretty much covers all the ways that you could or would want to get a weapon or prop asset into Unreal. So that is it for the setup for today. And that's gonna conclude episode one. In the next episode, the first real animation episode of the series, I'm gonna focus on idle animations. So we're gonna talk about what makes a good idle pose, how to get some character into that, and get our idle in game on our character in the next episode. So tune in next time, and until then, happy animating.